How funny though that you work with his brother too. Mm. So, because what happens if like Carl gives you the shits? You can't complain to yeah. your partner about it. Oh, well, Carl never gives me the shits. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. I'm trying to think of examples. That's so good no, though. No, he's good. No, we're, especially I'm lucky. at that hour of the morning for none of them to annoy you is amazing. Yeah. Oh, you're so you're so irritable at that yeah. hour of the day. Yeah. Um, which is you know it's we're so lucky we go in there and we have the best crew mm. on air obviously but on the floor as well um, and in the control room and it, and like my hair and makeup artists that I work with in the morning yeah. they're so much fun. Gemma and Morgan come in and have a good laugh every morning so it's just um, yeah. As much as Carl might try to bring me down sometimes, he, can't, he, can't. <laughs> he just can't. Oh, so can you talk me through a day, like what, you get up at 3.30? Get up at quarter past three. Holy shit, um, that's the middle of the night. And then hit the snooze probably once and get up yeah. at, well, actually physically get out of bed at about 3.20. Um, and then shower, drive into work, get there by about four, and then smash the papers out and then right. get into hair and makeup at about 20 past four and then mm. out of there at five, and then get changed and go through scripts and then on set. Wow. Yeah, and then we're on air at 5.30, so. So it's such, it's just a different life. It's not just a job, it's a lifestyle. It is, yeah, it definitely is. Um, but there, you know, obviously 3.15 is not an ideal time to be setting your alarm. No. Um, and it comes with a few, you know, cons, but mostly it's pros with that. I mean, yeah. it is the best job and mm. it is such a great lifestyle and it's the you know you go in and you just have fun with the people you work with every yeah. day you know and yeah. i um you know going back to being a team player yeah i much prefer work like i love working on a show where you're bouncing off all these other oh, people totally. interesting fun yeah. um quirky people you know all day um and you get i, I feed off that and i guess i'm an, ext an extrovert in that sense too so you get yeah, to sit there yeah. and feed off their energy and they feed off yours and it's just so much energy, you know. It's yeah, like this, yeah, yeah. it's this great, um, great vibe on set. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't enjoy getting up at three fifteen when the alarm goes off, but I enjoy everything that do. comes after yeah. that. Yeah. So nearly two years. Yeah. That's like gone that. So quickly, hasn't it? Has it has flown. It has totally flown. When you first started, um, because uh, Georgie Gardner um, changed her role, and you yeah. went into Georgie's seat. And it was, I remember seeing photos of going out to celebrate and you were all celebrating together. Yeah. Um, did, because also she had been on the show for quite some time, how did you find that initial, the first six months for you found quite difficult? Yeah, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, f a strange transition. Um, mm. And it was exciting, it was so exciting, but it was also a bit overwhelming yeah. at the same time. Um, and only because all of a sudden people are interested in me. Right. And asking me so many questions about yeah. what am I doing, how am I coping, how am I finding it, am I settling in and what's been the most difficult part and what's been the easiest part and what's the best part and um, and that was all a bit unusual and I sort of yeah, felt like okay. I don't deserve all this attention, you should go yeah. and ask someone a bit more interesting or um, that is such a worthy, that shows who you are as a person too. That that part of it it was probably surprised you that it that did. Was gonna, yeah, yeah. it's like a surprise attack, you know, yeah, like all yeah. of a sudden out of nowhere. Um, and there wasn't a lot of warning with with the job too. So it was really trying to get your head around it all so quickly. And you know, it's it's nothing. I'm not trying to say it's a, it's the hardest job in the world or anything like that. Absolutely not. Um, but it was just me out of my comfort zone, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, and doing something new in a brand new environment and mm. sitting next to people who are hugely experienced and respected yeah. um, in my field. And not only am I sponging off them, you know, I'm trying to learn off them and take as much as I can from them, but sometimes you're just like, why am I here? You know, they're there yeah. and I'm here. And, <laughs> um, and how has this kind of come about? So. It was, a, it was a bit of a funny and a strange transition, yeah. um, but also I was so supported through it. I mean, I couldn't have been more warmly welcomed yeah, yeah, yeah. by Carl and Lisa and Dickie. And, um, and then when Timmy came on board, you know, we've worked together a lot right. as well. So that was just, um, that was a lot of fun too. So I had a very, um, I had a, a pretty easy transition in the sense that I had a lot of people kind of supporting yeah, right. me and wanting me to do well yeah. and wanting me, me to succeed. And totally. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, it could have oh, could totally. have been completely different. So. And because also, 
those working in a team like that it's so unique as well mm. same as I guess a radio team which is a lot smaller though but if you don't feel safe which is yeah is that word again from you know your yeah. child if you don't feel safe and supported yeah you can't do a good job on live television for three and a half hours yeah. and there's so, no hiding so much of it obviously is unscripted and uh and then you've got you know Carl throwing in his wild cards every now yeah, and yeah, then yeah, just yeah. <laughs> Because the guy loves awkward and he openly admits yeah. he loves awkward. He feeds off awkward. So he likes to create awkward. And then you've got to yeah. somehow get around the awkward and get back to your safe zone again. Yeah, totally. Like, can't we just avoid the awkward? Oh, my God. So, so, so I don't get how people love that. A lot of people are like, I just love to put he that there and see how that goes. He loves it. He loves it. Yeah. So um, but that's, that's why he's so good at what he does. But... I wasn't quite comfortable with yeah. the awkward. <laughs> just, uh, just leave me out of it. <laughs> I've got scripts to look at, mate. Just leave me alone. Very busy and important. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> and like, working with Lisa, who has been on the couch yeah. and spoken about you two and, and how she does adore you. And a little while ago it came out that you two aren't even, that don't like each other. Where does that come from? Well, I don't know. If you, <laughs> this, is, this is one of the other things that... One of the things I've had to get used to, I suppose, is this kind of interest, is trying to put us into a headline, which yeah. again, when you're the journalist on the road covering news stories of the day, you know, this is not something that you're familiar with, right? So, yeah. um, and this is probably the, the weirdest one I've had to deal with. Um, when it's something like, oh, Sylvia and Pete go for a romantic stroll through Bondi Beach wearing a red shirt and blue pair of pants. Well, that's fine, because mm. it's, you know, whatever. Um, but when it is, completely false and also nasty um mm. it's just it's really uh it, it kind of knocked me a little bit at first um because i did and i called lisa lisa was in new york straight away and i had this mm. call saying oh we've got this what do you make of it and i called lisa i said look this is what someone wants to write about um i had to call you straight away because i just want you to hear it from my yeah. voice first yeah. before someone else writes to you or calls you or you read it in a newspaper or something and we're both on the phone trying to figure out where it could have come from or how someone could make this up because anyone who works with us would know sees every day how well yeah. we get along um yeah. and how much i lean on her you know as well um and so it just seemed it it, it was an, it was odd basically yeah. it was really odd and for me it was sort of a um the first time i had encountered something like it um so anyway but Anyway, I mean, it's, it's always going to happen, isn't it? And yeah. But where, how do, you, do you reckon that sometimes people, whoever wrote about that, I don't even know where it came from, but where, do you reckon that they literally go, let's see how, what we can get from this? Uh, I wonder I, how it works in there, or do they get... I think sometimes... I, I, don't, I don't understand the mentality yeah. of someone who would do that because I would never do that, so mm. I can't really say, I suppose, what exactly they're trying to achieve out of something like that. No. Um, but obviously some people get off on writing about how women in the workplace don't get along yeah. um, and they find that entertaining or maybe it's clickbait and obviously yeah. it's clickbait, everything's clickbait um, and breakfast television is clickbait. So um, in that respect, we've got big targets on our back. So, mm. um, Which is know. so fucked, isn't it? Because you go, let's not go that angle. Let's just yeah. not go that angle of women not supporting exactly. each other. Um, and at first I didn't want to give any oxygen to it because I thought I, I just don't even think it's worthy of a response because yeah. it was just so ridiculous and absurd um, but I'm so glad that Lisa addressed it the way she did in, in that Instagram post that she put up um, because they deserve to be called out yeah. on that story because it yeah. was ridiculous um, but look the, the crux of it is we're great mates mm. we completely support each other I'm so supported by her every day yeah. and vice versa um, and we're actually lucky you know I think you'd be hard pressed finding two women in the workplace who get on better than we do. Yeah. Um, right. So it's, <laughs> it, and if anything, I said this to her the other day. If anything, they've it's like their whole plan has been foiled because it's brought us closer together. Yeah, because yeah. we've been verbalising our love for each yeah. other oh, like, for the last few us. weeks. You know, you take things I for granted. In on that. I know. Oh, God, oh, I know. It's I very like, exclusive. <laughs> it's very exclusive. There's something quite magical about that woman. There like, is. Oh, compl she is superhuman. Yeah. And, you know, she, the, the woman barely sleeps. She runs her family and has, the, you know, she has this remarkably beautiful family. Her children adore her, clearly. Obviously, mm. her husband adores her yeah. and she adores her husband. 
Um, but she is, she's a woman who has forged a really fascinating and um, an impressive path in her mm. career. And she's allowed many other women to follow that path. Yeah. Um, and I'm one of them, mm. really. I feel like I'm pretty privileged to be, to be on that path that she has blazed for us. Um, and she continues to, you know, she's a really impressive woman and I'm so lucky to sit next to her and to feed off her every day. Yeah, because when you did your, you won the Fun and Fearless Cosmo yeah. Award and you said that you were like the grasshopper. Yeah. And she's your- She's my master. She's yeah. your master, which is so beautiful too. Yeah. And also to go, okay, we're friends, but she's a mentor mm. to you as well. Yeah. It's pretty special. It is really special. Um, and she, you know, she's so cool. And we talk yeah. about everything, yeah. you know, and not just, uh, probably, we speak more about personal things than yeah, work things, yeah, to be great. honest. Yeah. Um, because she's just such a cool woman. Um, and, and she's so generous too with mm. her personal experiences and, yeah. um, and things like that. So, you know, and I know that down the track when, you know, there are kids in my life, I'll be able to ask her about that and yeah. what do I do and yeah, how do I cope yeah. and how do I manage that and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hugely grateful and hugely lucky to have her in my yeah. life. Um, let's talk about your <laughs> nieces and nephews. Oh, I know, cute. my God, it's like you <gasps> grew them inside you. Yourself. Oh, I wish. <laughs> I wish I, I could create Auntie the, Silly. Auntie Silly. Mm. It's so great to learn from my brother and sister too first what it's all about and yeah. how to cope and how to deal and how to survive. And, um, and I feel like I get a good, real and raw insight into yeah. parenting yeah. and what to expect. No sugarcoating, which is yeah. probably quite useful, I think. Yeah, because it is real and very uh, yeah, raw. Yeah, and not sugarcoated. <laughs> no, because your sister used to have two or three boys. She's, she's got like, two boys. Yeah. That's right, yeah, because I was... Yeah, she follows us on Sean Town. She loves you. Well, I love she, it. She, she would fan out if oh, she saw you in the street. That's she would, the yeah, best. She would fan out. But we were talking about boys, you yeah. know, and just how, fuck man, having boys is like. It's full on. Full on. Yeah, well, fr I mean, Fraser's um, nearly, yeah, as I said, nearly four. Yeah. And gee, he's high energy. He's so much fun though. Like he wouldn't yeah. want it any other way because he's so entertaining and he's so yeah, vibrant yeah. and interesting. Like the stuff he's coming out with at the moment. Mum, mum, if you have an emergency, you should call Triple J. Ah, you know that is so funny. <laughs> things like that. So he's that's the best. He's so interesting at the oh, moment. He's so yeah. much fun. Um, so she's having a lot of fun with him, but she's just tired, you know, because yeah. she's got little Louis as well, and he's sick, and yeah. um, and she's just gone back to work too. So she's juggling all that, yeah. and um, so yeah, it's a it's a very real insight into yes. what's to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but beautiful. Yeah. As well. um, now show and tell. Yes. So this is Betsy. Um, my sister wants you to know that this is her doll, first okay. and foremost. Okay. <laughs> so the doll was made for her because she is the eldest granddaughter. Um, oh Betsy, my God, handmade. Handmade. Betsy was hand sewn by my grandmother, oh my, my Marty. Um, is Marty still around? No, Marty passed away at the end of last year. Um, she sewed all of our formal gowns as well when we were the three of us, my oh, wow. cousin as well. Um, and she was very special to us, our Marty. But yeah, so she sewed. Um, she sewed Betsy for us when we were little. Well, when How Claire was little, my sister. Betsy. Betsy's a good name. Betsy's uh, a good name for you. Need to call your first kid Betsy. I know. I don't know. That's going to have to be measured. I think it totally <laughs> smells like as old as it is. I know it's old. So if my um, my sister's thirty five this right. year, so Betsy's probably, you know, nudging her. Th fourth century almost. Do you reckon your sister like secretly really wanted a cabbage patch doll? Oh, oh she had one. I always oh. wanted a, I think she had one. Oh no, maybe she had one of those fake ones oh. that wasn't quite the cabbage patch doll. But, yeah. But yeah, we I probably wouldn't have been friends with Claire if she had a fake cabbage patch doll. No, well, we didn't, we weren't allowed the real ones. <laughs> Single mum. Okay. We got the fake everything. This is uh, unreal. Oh my God. Yeah. So she sewed so the outfits. So then, um, oh, she's, she's popped she's a flushing. button. You minx. Dirty Betsy. Betsy, come on, do yourself up. Um, but we've all got photos everywhere we go with Betsy. Um, do you? She lost her shoes at one point, and I did a story for Today Show when I was on the road for them in right. Sydney um, on the Doll Hospital in Sydney, 100 years of the Doll Hospital. So I took Betsy along to get her some new shoes. Um, and my grandma, Cybergran, we would call her because she was on Instagram and Facebook and no email. Way. And, Amazing. Um, she was very connected to all of us um, in her sort of final years yeah. via the internet. 
and she blasted me with emails. Um, I, I was just trying to find one, but it didn't come up. Um, she blasted me with emails after the story went to air with Betsy's big debut on national television. <laughs> saying Why? She's hearing reports that it's all gone to her head and now she's a horrible minx. Betsy's turned into a horrible <laughs> minx and I just can't look at her the same way oh anymore. Oh my gosh, she's so gorgeous. <laughs> but she was just so thrilled to see her girl on national oh, television. So <laughs> I thought you were going to say she was annoyed that she got new shoes. No, no, she was very, she was thrilled oh, with so the update cute. in the footwear, but she was just disappointed that she'd gone up herself. So if this is your <laughs> sister's, why do you have it? Uh, well, I sort of ended up with it because I was younger than my sister. Um, and so it was in my possession. And then I just got to kind of hold on to it. Mm. And now that Claire's got two boys, yeah. um, hopefully one day if I've got a daughter, then my daughter can yeah. can, uh, oh, can carry special. on. Betsy, yeah. But um, yeah, well, my grandmother was a very special lady. And she, um, I think she got a real kick out of that story too, because she always wanted to be a journalist, my grandmother. Oh, did she? She used to write a lot. Um, and she wrote things for the Women's Weekly and, oh, wow. um, and wrote sister, uh, her sister letters re religiously too. She was a beautiful writer. Mm. Um, and she used to instill that in us too. We would spend weekends at her house and play Scrabble mm. and she'd make us write things out of the dictionary and come yeah, up with new right. sentences for new words and things like that. So I think that influence has been quite strong. Yeah, uh, totally. Her influence in many ways has been quite strong, our love for dessert um, oh and God, for Sunday roasts oh, and yes. things like that. Oh my God. And don't yeah. they just have the best, like my name was so beautiful. So just the, you with your mum and your nan sounds so similar. Like, oh my God, mm. my nan. I remember thinking I cannot, ever survive without my nan because she's just the best and yeah. then you do you know like yeah. which is actually like the she's been the first really close person to me to pass away yeah um and i remember thinking oh my god oh my god how's this going to go and then but at night time when the stars are out bax comes out and he's like hi nanny. oh that's so and, sweet and the first time he did just did it off his back because i said you know he said where's nanny and i said yeah. she's in the stars and so now oh, like, oh that's nanny, beautiful isn't it the best? <laughs> yeah. and i still feel like she's around yeah she didn't meet my second baby and I'm like god she would love him because he's so yeah. funny yeah so whenever he does something great I'm like Nan's seen that yeah she she'd be appreciating it yeah. yeah I wish Pete didn't get to meet my Marty um but he would have adored her she's so funny yeah. she was just so um she wasn't your average grandmother yeah um yeah. so but yeah we had a very special relationship with her and um my at her funeral at the end of last year actually my Cousin Natalie made her jelly slice for everyone <laughs> and passed it around. So we all, um, you know, we take her recipes and um, and we've got many beautiful um, birthday cards from her. And yeah. I've kept it's it's really cool having a cyber gran um, <laughs> because when she passed away, I could go through and read all her emails and I could just oh, go back wow. to her Instagram page and look at her pictures and her yeah. posts. And she would write her own captions and uh, was she when and she she'd find away? The, she had a fan club on Facebook. Oh. She was ninety one. Oh my Gosh, and she was on social media. She loved it. She loved it. All my friends were following her on Facebook and communicating with her on Facebook. She'd oh comment gosh, on all their pictures. That's incredible. And yeah, Cybergram was very active. Very active. <laughs> so Chrissy Swan met you for the first time. Oh yeah. At the Logies. So we we fanned out. We were getting into the lift. Pete and I were leaving to get in the lift and go back to our room. Night was over. Um, because we didn't even get to the after party. We're so lame. Oh, yeah. um, but we get into the lift and then we were in there with um, Tash Belling from Channel 10 and then Chrissy jumps in. And I'm like, quick, shut the door so she can't get out. <laughs> that's so funny. I, I have only, I mean, I've spoken to her down the two-way before. I think yeah. that's the first time I've seen her in the yeah. flesh before. And I love her. Oh my God. I love her. It's I so melted. mutual that we were texting the other night because I said that we're going to be you yeah. know, catching up with Sylvia and she's like, oh my God, I almost need to, I was going to send you a screen grab of the of the text, but I was like, you're going to get a psycho. <laughs> so it's like, oh my God, have you seen them together in real life? I reckon my sister and I have done worse over like other people. Oh my God. You should, I read that back and I'm like, this is psycho. She's like, have you, because Chrissy and I are like, want to bone Carl and she's like, I've swapped. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I think I've swapped too. So yeah. careful, because Chrissy and I have fine. No, no. But she's like, have you set, he's like, this tall, <laughs> and the two of them together, she's like, they're like unicorns because it's oh. like, it's mystical, it's amazing. <laughs> anyway, so I caught up with her. <laughs> it's just hilarious. It was like borderline oh. psycho. Anyway, so we went out for breakfast the other day okay. and I'm like, I'll give you Sylvia's number. You text her and she goes, no, it's too psycho. I said, she would love it if you it's messaged her, soon. you should. I'm happy to text on the first day. Yeah, okay, you'll text her from here. But then um, she starts talking about you like, 
monologuing about you and Pete and how magical you are and how she really wants you to have babies and stuff like that. And then I might just stop, let me film this. And this is what she has okay. for you. <laughs> Sylvia, it's me. I just, I can't, it's been a week since I've seen you and I, I can't stop thinking about you. I think about you all the day, all the day long. And to me, you are just like a magical <laughs> unicorn, <Stalker>. magical <laughs> unicorn of a woman. I love that. And it went on, I said, I've stopped filming. I and can't believe Chrissy Swan knows me, let alone. No, like, she wants to know you like hardcore. Oh, let's get to know each other. Yeah. All the day long. <laughs> she would be, she seriously is going to be so thrilled with that. I love it. So funny. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So there you go. There's a, a new unicorn. Best that's the nicest no, thing you anyone said to me. Like, she said, Have you seen them together? I oh, said I haven't funny. yet, she said, oh, it's a sight. Well, <laughs> we were probably a bit handsy too because we'd had a few drinks. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I love it. Your dad was a... Vietnam veteran. Yeah, so yeah. is my dad. Yeah. Did he talk about it very much when you were growing up? Uh, no, not really. No. Um, he speaks a lot about, I mean, my dad's always been heavily involved in the RSL. Right. So he speaks a lot about the need to support veterans and, right. and aftermath kind of stuff, I suppose. Yeah. Not so much about his own experience yeah. um, but I've started asking him a bit more about it recently yeah. I think I've obviously become more interested in it and um, and also what he's been offered yeah. after coming home it's it's interesting we had a conversation about it just the other day when he was down here in Sydney and um, he was pointing out that I mean retrospectively Vietnam veterans veterans have been given quite a lot of support mm -hmm. um, now that they're at home that came a long time oh, after long their time return after. home and my dad was yeah. conscripted he was in no way so was mine ready or yeah. fit or prepared for war yeah. mentally physically anything no um so retrospectively the support has come through and it's terrific you know he gets a lot of support um with gym memberships and counseling and things that keep him healthy yes. and keep his mind active and yeah. um things that he really needs um but veterans now coming home from the middle east they're offered a fraction of what those Vietnam veterans right. were given them. They've, they've reduced the amount of support through DVA. Um, there, is no, there is next to no recognition through government agencies, as far as I'm aware, of the suicide issue, the homelessness yeah. issue. You know, I, yeah. I did a story recently at RSL Life Care at Narrabeen in Sydney. It's the only facility of its kind that offers accommodation like that to homeless veterans right. and the impact they're having on lives there is enormous they are pulling people literally back from the brink wow. um, and it's so crucial it's so important what they're doing there and I don't know I just I mean l legacy and um, you know soldier on mm. these organizations do terrific work but it should be the government that sends them to war yeah. that supports them when they come back yeah. from war yeah you just because there's not a friend of uh one of my best mate's brother um, went to Afghanistan and the, while he was serving, it was any time the phone would ring, you know, it, she would just bolt no matter where mm. we were hoping because he would call home occasionally and he would, they're very close family, so he would split it between the sisters wow. and the mum. And, yeah. and I have a younger brother too and I just remember going, if that was my brother, I How would couldn't you cope? even breathe, yeah. you know, like, yeah. and just knowing what he went through and what he saw, no matter how much amount you think you can be prepared for something like that? Mm. How can you? Never, never. You There's no chance. And our grandmothers lived through that, and mm. in some cases our mothers lived through that, yeah. our great grandmothers, you know, sitting at home and wondering and waiting, and are they going to come home, and how will they come home, and what state will they be in when they come home? And, yeah. Um, and today it's still happening, you know, and I, and I, I just hope that something changes. I hope that there is an increase in the support for our men and women coming home. And they're coming home from a very different war. They're coming home from a war that most Australians don't feel an attachment to. Yeah. The middle, what's going on in the Middle East feels very removed, yeah, I think, for most Australians yeah. today. Yeah. Um, and so they're not welcomed home, they're not welcomed home as heroes. Yeah, and which they absolutely are. Which they are, yeah. Yeah. completely. Um, and there is a huge need and a desperate and an urgent need to offer more support to our mm. veterans, to the men and women coming home now. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Um, most expensive thing you've bought and never really worn? Uh, um, uh, probably a, um, oh gee, this, I should have prepared for these. 
Um, most expensive thing I haven't worn. Oh, there was a really nice pair of shoes. But, so I have size 42 feet, so I couldn't fit into them. I bought a 41 because I really wanted them. Oh, and they were yeah. a couple of hundred dollars and they just sat there and I could never wear them because they were too uncomfortable. It's the worst when you do that, isn't it? It's the worst you when you have size 42 your feet. your penis would be? It'd be huge. Do you want to call my brother and ask? <laughs> Does he have size 42 feet? Um, no, much bigger than mine. Oh, I would have, my I wouldn't like to know about the rest of it. Holy moly. In oh, three I can't believe I just took that there with my brother. Why did you start talking about penis and I you went know. to your brother, you oh, it's you. You're a terrible influence on me. <laughs> um, in three words, describe what your first kiss was like. Oh, rushed and bad. Yeah, <laughs> it was I'm behind so J-Block at high school. Well, J-Block, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, nudist oh. or never nude? Uh, rarely nude. Uh, really? Yeah. Why? Um, I just... Oh, you've got I, housemates too. I think it's unhygienic. What do you mean? I just like having areas covered. What's going on down there? <laughs> well, nothing, but I just like to... When you get out of the I shower? just like to keep it all down there, you know? I just don't want to look. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what? Once I was cooking dinner for Sam and I didn't have clothes beep, on and it wasn't... <laughs> to be sexy cooking dinner either but I got home I just got out of the shower or something and put it on and he was like I'm not eating that and I'm like it's so fucked up that's worse than sneezing in someone's food oh you know God. I'm like my nipple hairs aren't falling into this hot creep oh how many hairs are eat it oh boy um, I just you know what is covered. a fact is well, that <laughs> when I fell pregnant, I got nipple hairs <laughs> and the other day, and no shit, not many, but like that, yeah, like that, no, just, but they were quite dark, like maybe two or so, okay. when I say two, let's just times that by about 16, Yeah. but anyway. It'd and be a, it's a hard area to shave, too. Don't shave. <laughs> I'm not shaving my nipples, but I plucked them. You are, that's even worse. <laughs> I was That's plucking. So I plucked out the few hairs, and poor Sam walked into the bathroom when I was plucking, and he just looked at me, and he said, "Don't you ever let he me can't see that again." Say that. I was like, "Man, oh, well, did you just say at least they're not in your soup?" I know. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, be careful. <laughs> okay. Have you ever God. made a booty call? Oh no. Really? <laughs> no. No. Neither. No. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, do you lie to your partner about anything? Uh, mm, mm, I don't think so. Uh, maybe how much work I've done during the day sometimes. Right. I've been really busy when I've yeah. been watching Ray Donovan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever bought anything from an adult store and not for a hen's party? Um, I think I may have gone in there for a work story once, but I don't think I bought anything. No. Okay. No. Um, if you could travel back in time, would you change anything? Oh, um, I'd change. I'd change my level of self-esteem as a teenager. Ah, yeah, good one. That would definitely be altered. Um, I'd probably change a few of the things I wore on air in the early days. Oh, really? Yeah. And would you change? Still, do you know, I'd probably go back to last week and change something I wore. No there, to way! Be honest. Green, green, green. All green. You know what you should change though is how you wore, how tight you wore your hat so you could get. Oh, your definitely. Oh, do you know what I would do? As I'd go back and never pluck my eyebrows again because there's this little gap right here on this eyebrow that I just can't fill yeah, in right. because I plucked too much, way too much. Yeah, and because thin eyebrows were in, old. and now it's all about so the bush. In. I know, and now they're all gone. Mm, okay. Yeah, we're done. Is that it? We're oh. done.